What up, dudes? I'm back again with another Let's Play episode of one of my favorite games on the current gen, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Man, I know I'm uploading this a lot sooner than I just recently did the first episode, but I gotta be honest with you. I'm actually kind of digging the schedule that I'm gonna have with the Fighter Z playthrough videos, or Let's Plays, whatever you wanna call them, because I do feel like, you know, it gives me more to do, and instead of just waiting, like, one episode a week because that's well think about it this way with the with how the game is set up you're allowed to have 10 presets or 10 pre-made teams so if i did that that'd mean i'd be playing this game for 10 weeks if i did one stream a week so i was like nah i'm gonna narrow it down to two so that i get twice the joy in making these and you guys get twice the pleasure in viewing these or you know Whatever the hell you get out of these videos, but... Oh, man. I'm so glad to be doing episode two because this is probably... I'm probably going to be speaking too soon when I say this, but this is probably my best stream yet. And I say that because... When I, res when I restarted this game... Like, was it earlier this month or late last month? And I would play story mode. And whenever I would play story mode, like, my go-tos were always Goku, Krillin... Tien and Yamcha but out of those four the last three that I just mentioned I was I'm like super fucking good with them because when it comes to fighting games combos are my specialty I can do combos out the ass with Krillin Tien and Yamcha like I'm some just so fucking good with them so I was like you know what I'm gonna kick it up a notch for this episode and play a much harder variation of the snake way ladder that I did in the last episode because in the last episode it was more like a test drive of the snake way ladder because i was like you know five matches yeah that sounds pretty that, that sounds pretty even because three just wouldn't be enough to showcase what i'm capable of in this game so as you can see i'm i'm definitely doing my best to showcase what i can do with these three you know the first match is always it's always the easiest because the better you do the harder it gets so it's like, you know what? Fuck it. I like a good challenge. Why the fuck not? <laughs> but, um... I'm, I'll definitely say that, you know, as you watch this video, you'll notice how, compared to the last episode, this was definitely my best... My best piece so far. And this is only the second entry out of ten that I have planned for this schedule. So without further ado... Let's see what you guys think as I play along, and I'll just be coming up with discussions about this game because, you know, I recently started playing the hard mode of the story mode because, you know, when I first picked this game up, I, I just played the story mode, I played the ladder a couple times, and then I was like, eh, I'm done. Besides, I got a couple other games I want to play, like I mentioned in the last episode. Because the Devil May Cry HD Collection that came out for PS4. Far Cry 5 had come out. And I was super stoked for Far Cry 5 that year. So I was like, gotta get this out of the way, gotta get this out of the way. And when I did, I went back, played Fighter Z. I was pretty pleased with both games. Because like those were those were my type games in the in the first half of 2018. I did play the Seven Deadly Sins game, but let's be honest, that game was super fucking basic. I felt like I was playing J Star's Victory Versus all over again. If anybody's played J-Star's Victory Versus Plus, which is the worldwide edition of the release, it's very repetitive. It's cute. It's adorable. The story follows the anime so well. But it's very repetitive. Like, there is no... How can I say this? There's not variety. There is no variety in any of the combos that you do in that game. Like, yeah, the special techniques are cool. The, the the combat's neat, but it's repetitive. And as you progress to the story, like, yeah, it does pose a challenge. But what good is a challenge if you don't have variety? Because so how, how do you expect to play Pokemon if you only have one Pokemon with one move? That was literally the equivalent of a, a repetitive Pokemon game. Where you have one, one Pokemon and one move. I don't know if it's still like the old gen, but, you know, 
you get four moves, but you only have one. <laughs> That's honestly what Seven Deadly Sons and Knights of Britannia felt like. So that definitely wasn't my top game in the first half. But then again, there was only three new games I actually played in the first half of that year. So, of course, if I had to rank them, it would be Knights of Britannia, Fighter Z, and Far Cry 5. Actually, no, I'm going to switch Far Cry and Fighter Z because... If I'm still playing Fighter Z right now, that means that, you know, it's obviously a better pick. And if I'm still playing it just to... Just to get these streams out of the way, then you know goddamn well it's a good game. Well, it, obviously it's a good fucking game to me. But I'm going back, replaying these, doing these Let's Plays. So hell yeah, it's a fucking blast. And, you know, like, like I said, I've never done a Let's Play before, so... And can we also talk about how this game was announced, like, in the midst of the hype for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Do you guys remember that game? <laughs> I genuinely remember being excited for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. But the reviews, the, the audience reception, the critical reception was so terrible for that game. And I can understand why, because... Okay, cool, you, you introduced a story mode. But you absolutely butchered the ladder. Like the arcade. And... Because in the first three games, you had a good arcade. Every character had an ending. But then in the Infinite, you had a story mode. The arcade was fucking trash, though. Because... You know, no character endings. It's just, hey, you play the arcade, congrats. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that was such bullshit. I would never want to play a game like that ever again. Such an unfinished, butchered masterpiece. What well, could have been a masterpiece. But, you know, the developers were just like, let's just give them a decent story. And just say, fuck it. We'll release more characters later. And I know they did that with... Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but at least it was fun. At least, at least, like I said, at least it was fucking fun. Because Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was not that great. And also, can we just talk about ugh, the ugly character models they had for that game? Like, everybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge Devil May Cry fan. So of course when I play Marvel vs. Capcom, my go-to's are Dante, um, well, in, in, in MVC3 it's, it's Dante, Virgil, and Trish, and also Zero from Mega Man X, because I also love Mega Man, but I think Zero was, no, it was X that was in this game, so he, he was also my go-to, and so... I look at Dante's character model, I was disgusted, I was horrified, I was heartbroken, I was pissed. I wanted to sue the developers, no not the developers but the character designers for this game because I felt betrayed. <clears throat> I felt absolutely betrayed when I saw Dante's design for this game. I've genuinely never felt such betrayal in my life until I saw his character model for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. I couldn't forgive them for it. So, after I finished the story for that game, I never picked it up again. Because I was like, look, even for a Marvel game, even for a comic book game, this story is pretty fucking cheesy. It's corny, whatever you want to call it. And the fact that, you know, you gave more justice to the... To the Marvel characters. And the popular Capcom characters. And you just absolutely butchered the rest of them. That seems pretty unfair. So, yeah, definitely fuck that game. Fighter Z comes out. I'm blown the fuck away. Because it's like, 
my all-time favorite series coming together with the best fighting mechanics that Bandai has ever put together and boom you got yourself a gym and some people will say otherwise because you know this is basically Dragon Ball and the style of Street Fighter which it is because it's literally the same style well, I wouldn't say it's just Street Fighter itself, because I don't know if Street Fighter has team battles, but definitely has. Marvel vs. Capcom definitely has team battles, so it's definitely Dragon Ball in the style of Marvel vs. Capcom. And the saddest part, this game did it so much better than Infinite. <laughs> Man, that kind of hurts to admit. Because Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is so good. But so is this game. Oh my god. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt this and let you guys know that Android 17 from Dragon Ball Super is such a pain in the ass. Like, holy fucking shit. I couldn't catch my breath for a second unless he switched with another teammate. Which I was glad he did. But man, I fucking hate fighting him. As much as I hate fighting Trunks in this game. <laughs> so. Looking back on the first half of 2018, this was definitely the superior title. Out of the three games that I played that year. So. I guess that's a sigh of relief on my part. Because the rest of that year, like I mentioned in the last episode, was just... The Mega Man X Collection, uh, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption 2. So it's like you got a remaster of some childhood favorites, and then you got two of the biggest games that year. I did play God of War for the PS4, but not until the year after, so I'd practically be lying if I said that that was also my top title, because I didn't play it until a year after. And I was blown away by that title too, probably more than I was with Red Dead. Which says a lot, because I'm still emotionally attached to that game. <laughs> like, as a, as a gamer, I guess? I don't even know if I can call myself a gamer, because I do all sorts of shit. Vlogs, gaming, shit posting. <laughs> but, um, I'm still emotionally attached to Red Dead too. But... As a game overall, God of War PS4 takes the fucking cake. Can we also talk about Jump Force? Oh my god. <laughs> I have such a shitty story to tell about Jump Force. So, that came out the same day that Far Cry New Dawn did. And I was excited because it was probably the first anime-based game to introduce Ichigo Kurosaki's new outfit from the chapters that come after the anime. Or just the chapters haven't, that haven't been animated yet, but I'll speak on that later. I was genuinely excited for that because I've only ever played one Bleach video game, and that was Soul Resurrection. So, obviously I'm like... Cool, a decent game with Bleach characters. I I can't wait to fucking play this. The game comes out. I put it in. I was appalled by the gameplay. The lack of emotional face facial mechanics. Cause like you know if you're gonna if you're gonna make a fucking video game, at least let your characters have emotions or express. Facial expressions. But Jump Force failed to do that terribly. You couldn't even see them fucking talk during cutscenes. So I'm like, what the fuck did they do to this game? Jesus Christ. I feel like I'm watching a terrible silent film. <laughs> I feel like somebody just grabbed an animated silent film. And just dubbed it. The worst possible way they could. I didn't even get to play as Ichigo. I didn't even get to play as Prisoner Aizen. Bro. 
That killed my whole fucking hype for the Bleach characters. Because I wanted Bleach to have some justice for so fucking long. And you know what I got in return? Dog shit. So, I tried it out. I tried to fucking play it again. All that weekend. I fucking hated it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to list this on Makari. Because there is absolutely no fucking way I'm ever playing this game again. I am sure as hell not making someone pay retail price for it. Because it's not fucking worth it. So I listed it on Makari. Somebody bought it in an instant. And they messaged me, hey, there's something wrong with the game? I'm like, nope. Perfect condition. Mint. In fact, I just got it. Because, you know, you see a brand new game on Macari for less than retail price and people think something's wrong with it. Well, nothing's wrong with the disc. But something's wrong with this fucking game. <laughs> oh my god. Oh shit, shit, shit. You know what? Speaking of people that are a bitch to fight in Fighter Z, Trunks. I fucking hate fighting Trunks in Fighter Z. I swear to god. I'm sorry, I had to cut that expression off just to talk about this. Oh my god. Bruh. Trunks is the fucking devil in story mode. Especially in hard mode, because he just spams the fuck out of the burning attack. And if you're very unlucky, he's gonna catch you and do the heat dome attack, which is so much worse. Especially in hard mode, because like, your characters are... If you're like me and you train all your characters, you're gonna have like level 40 ish, level 40 mid, mid 40 ish characters. And then as you get towards the end of every map, the enemies are like level 50, level 55, level 60. You got a level 55 trunks, you got a level 45 Super Saiyan God Goku. He's still gonna spam the fuck out of that burning attack and kill you. <sighs> but, anyways, yeah. Speaking of Bleach, I'm so excited. For the thousand year blood war arc to be finally be animated and that's all i'm gonna say for jump force fuck jump force <laughs> well i hope you guys enjoyed this please subscribe because i'm gonna be doing this twice a week thanks